did you guys know that you can use your mesh tastic device if it has the built-in gps along with a digipi to get accurate gps results for things like direwolf well you can turns out these mesh tastic devices if you have that gps dongle they can be configured as serial nmea devices to output uh, data to basically any type of GPS client that would accept such data. And in this case, the DigiPi does ship with GPSD, which does accept that data. And we can configure Direwolf to accept that data in order to send regular position reports, just as if it was a regular APRS tracker. If you happen to have these two devices, you can marry them together and have GPS on your DigiPi. So let me show you how to get that set up. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your uh, Mesh-tastic device is on obviously and you have some way to manage it whether it be serial or whether it be uh, Bluetooth preferably Bluetooth because we're gonna tie up the serial in just a second And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. All right So I'm going to be managing things from my Android phone But if you guys are using the web you can use that as well First thing we're gonna do is go into those position settings and you want to make sure that your GPS is actually enabled um, And the next thing you want to do is check out your option for uh, GPS update interval Usually by default, I think this thing's set to 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour. Um, if we're using this for amateur radio, uh, especially for APRS, we want that to update a little bit more frequently. So I've put in 120 seconds for two minutes, and that should do me there. The next thing that you're going to take a look at is the serial module. So the module configuration, uh, we are going to enable the serial module, and that's going to allow us to change the... Uh, one or either the pins on the device to output specific information or the main USB hub, which is what we're going to use The baud rate uh, I've used 9600 here, which works for me, but you might use 4800 as well. I know some uh, GPS softwares will only accept 4800 I've adjusted my timeout to five and I can't really say that it matters too much, but I gave it a little buffer uh, The next thing you're going to change is this serial mode and this is kind of cool. What MeshTastic offers is you can actually, uh, you know, change the type of data that's being out. And we are going to do GPS, right? So obviously we want that NMEA, which is that GPS information. Now, if you all are high speed, you can take some of those extra pins that you assign here and here and actually wire yourself a serial device probably to the Pi or some type of controller and intercept that GPS data. But we have the option here of overriding the console serial port. That's what I'm doing here. And what that does is it takes the main USB, and in my case, that is the USB here, the USB-C that you see on the MeshTastic device, and it turns that into a serial GPS port. Now, if you are only able to manage your node or your MeshTastic device from that port, if you don't have Bluetooth like I do or wireless, uh, potentially that could actually maybe lock you out of your device. So. Be careful with that. I have Bluetooth, so it's not a problem for me. So once you have that set up, go ahead and hit send or save, and your MeshTastic device should be good. The next thing you're gonna do is just take your DigiPi and make sure that you plug in your MeshTastic device into one of the USB ports on the DigiPi. And you can basically go ahead and get it started. I'm gonna meet you guys over on the DigiPi uh, web console. Here, I'm just assuming that you've only just started the DigiPi. You're kind of at this you know, first initial screen. We're going to go ahead and first we need to hit save configs. And what this is going to do is allow us to do some editing of the files uh, in just a moment. And then we're going to SSH into the DigiPi. And let me zoom in here. If you guys don't know, the username is Pi and the password is the default Raspberry. And once we're in here, there's a couple things we want to do. Now, if you're not using the DigiPi, you will need to issue, issue these commands first in, to actually uh, install the GPSD program uh, and also get your user in the correct group. Uh, the DigiPi does all this by default, so I don't have to do all these things. But picking up on that, we have to edit a specific file. And this is the GPSD uh, configuration file. So first, I'm going to show you guys how to find which device is your GPS. If you go to CD space slash dev on boot and you type in LS, See this TTY AMC0? That is my MeshTastic device. For some reason, it always pops up as zero, so I don't have to worry about it changing. But if you guys are having issues finding yours, what you can do is unplug the device. You can type in ls here in slash dev. And if it doesn't show up, and then you plug it back in, and you type in ls and it does show up, that's how you can deduce which one's which, right? Uh, 
but here we're going to grab this TTY AECM0 and now we need to edit that GPSD configuration file and I'll show you guys where it's at alright so nano uh, we're going to do nano slash etc slash default slash GPSD actually we're going to put sudo before that okay and this will open up your def uh, your configuration file now these are the settings that I found match my um, MeshTastic device so yours could be a little different right so uh, start daemon uh, I've chose to make this equal to true under devices this is just the path to that the MeshTastic serial device that we just set up right so that's where that ACM0 came from now by default I think the DigiPy has this as dash n and dash b but I've removed the dash b and so my only GPS option is dash n which I think it means network I could be wrong uh, USB auto I have equal to false that way it doesn't try to lock up any of my radio serial connections and this is something that I've noticed I've added that makes things just work I can't I, I honestly have not dug into it to try to figure out why so if you have issues you may have to run uh, add this line as well but this is what your if you're using the MeshTastic device like I am you can basically just mirror these options in your configuration file and they should basically be right uh, there shouldn't be anything different there uh, once you have that in there uh, it's probably best to uh, hit Control X if you're using Nano and Shift Y to save. You'll save the file. So now we're going to go ahead and make a couple of changes over on the Direwolf configuration. So if you do CD space squiggly line, right, tilde, we're going to type in LS just to see what files we have here. Now, the ones that I'm concerned about is going to be direwolfdigipeter.conf as well as um, direwolftnc.conf. That's because I like both of them to uh, transmit. So the first one I'm going to take a look at is this direwolf.digipeter.conf. So we're going to say nano. And then we're going to put the file name to open it up for editing. And there's not a whole lot of changes I've made here. So by default, Digipy has this beacon, the RF. It's a position beacon, but it's a hard-coded latitude and longitude. So you'll need to comment that out. So on the, you need this GPSD local host, so we're going to add that in, right? So we're commenting these out, we're adding the, local, the GPSD local host, and then we're adding this T-Beacon line. And let's click through it here. Uh, it starts 15 seconds after Direwolf starts. It beacons every 10 minutes. We're using the Digi symbol. Um, now the comment that I've put here is mobile APRS iGate and DigiPeter. If you guys can see, all this is is it just wraps to, this is all it is, right? It ends with the string and ends with this quote at the end. Putting that in will actually use your GPSD module and your MeshTastic device to get your position. So uh, in my case, I'm going to be using it when I'm driving around and I can have APRS automatically send my position beacon as normally uh, every 10 minutes. And uh, you, it will use my MeshTastic device if it's plugged in with USB as the USB source. And just like the, um, the DigiPeter, I also set up the TNC this way. It, you know, it's preference if you want to or not. Um, but literally, basically just the same thing. Uh, I've commented out any other position beacons. And I've made sure to put that GPSD local host. And then here's my T-beacon line. And in my case here, all it is on the TNC side is this saying mobile APRS iGate. Uh, because digipeating is not enabled on this one. So once you have those changes made, uh, the best thing you can do is just hit save configs and then hit the reboot on uh, your DigiPy. And when it reboots, and if you guys don't know, you have to hit save configs to enable file editing that will persist. You make your changes and then you hit save config again to save those, actually save those changes into memory. So a little quirk there that I found. Um, once it's back up, you can verify that Direwolf, if you're using Direwolf like I am, you can hit packet log. And as long as you are transmitting the uh, positions, you'll see it with the latitude and longitude, then you know that it's working. And you'll also see feedback here from uh, GPSD saying latitude or your location fix is now 3D if you lost your location. 
Another way you can verify that your GPS is working is with a utility called, I think it's GPS Mon. And once you open this up, uh, you should see data coming from your Meshtastic device down here in the form of NMEA, I think it is. And we can see here uh, latitude and longitude. We can basically see all this information from the GPS uh, here. So that's pretty handy, right? I just saw it. I just got these mesh tastic devices and I thought it was really cool that you're able to change that serial port to use the onboard GPS considering as amateur radio operators we happen to use GPS quite a bit with our applications and for time and, and uh, APRS and things like this. So, uh, you know, it's kind of niche. I don't know if you're into mesh tastic and you're in APRS and you're into the DigiPi and you're into like mobile, whatever. But some people out there might find that useful, and I'm sure there's other uses for that onboard serial GPS. So let me know down below if you found any other weird uses for the mesh-tastic mesh devices that uh, are not completely apparent. And that'll be it. 73 to you.